Yeah, peace. I love peace. I'd be out of a job with peace. Do we know each other? Time. Reality. Reality. It's changeable. Where you want to be? That's the question, isn't it? Every universe is different. Each one unique. Slow down a little bit. There's a few people in the room that don't understand. Not me, I, I get it. Who are you? The name's Captain Carter. I am the Watcher. I observe all that transpires here. But I do not, cannot, will not interfere. I guess I have to freestyle then. Hey! We have you out of bird. A Ravager never flies solo. I said, never flies solo. Uh, is that some kind of catchphrase? You had me worried for a second. Journey to face the unknown and ponder the question. What if? Welcome back everyone. This is going to be my brand new Marvel What If trailer video. They just dropped a brand new one with a whole bunch of footage from all the episodes so we'll break it all down. And we finally have a release date. I will be doing full episode videos for it starting in August when it releases so be sure to subscribe to get everything if you're brand new to the channel. Now you can see why they waited till after Loki to sort of do this series because it trades so much more heavily on the multiverse trope and gets way crazier than the Loki series gets. As crazy as Alligator Loki is, Superior Loki, Marvel's What If, because it's an animated series, can just take the concept of the multiverse in the Marvel movies to the nth degree and there's no real budgetary constraints. Like even during the Loki series, they had that bottle episode during episode three when they were stuck on the planet Lamentus one, which felt like a smaller episode because they spent so much money on Loki episode five and what's probably gonna be a really, really crazy Loki episode six finale. The way Kevin Feige pitched the Marvel What If episodes is that each one is going to feel like a big Marvel movie, but there are 10 episodes total, so it's way more episodes, way more characters, way more movies that they're covering. What I'll do though is because there's so much stuff going on during this, I'll start at the beginning of the trailer and work our way through shot by shot talking about Easter eggs, WTF moments, and number these as we go along just to stay organized. But it starts with the footage from the first Iron Man movie and it's Tony Stark, but what if he got saved by Killmonger during the events of that first movie? So the idea during this episode, whichever one this winds up being, is that Killmonger forms a partnership with Tony Stark because he owes him his life. And as you can see, he's still wearing his armor in a version of Wakanda and he's charging. There's this big battle that he's part of. As you can also probably detect in the background, the Watcher is speaking to a lot of different people and you have this party version of Thor. That's what they're calling this version of Thor with the sleeveless armor, Party Thor. He says, slow down. Some of the other people don't understand. I totally understand, but some of these people don't. The whole idea is they're doing a version of what you would consider the Exiles in the MCU. It's like a multiverse version of Avengers. So you actually see all the main characters on this big poster here. Like you even see a version of Spider-Man wearing Doctor Strange's cloak of levitation. Make all the Harry Potter jokes. You're a wizard now, Peter. Nice call back to the time that Spider-Man actually did wear a cape and to Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. Spider-Man doesn't wear a cape and then they go down to his lair. See? A cape. That also feels like it's kind of foreshadowing the events of Doctor Strange into the Multiverse of Madness. So the way they said that all the Marvel Disney Plus series are supposed to cross over with and influence the Marvel Phase 4 movies, some of this is also foreshadowing the craziness of Doctor Strange 2 Multiverse of Madness, maybe a little bit of Spider-Man No Way Home as well, but probably more in common with Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. 
Like you have Peggy Carter, Captain Britain, talking to a version of Dark Doctor Strange, who goes way, way darker during the events of the first Doctor Strange movie. But you also notice it does sound like they got somebody different that's not Robert Downey Jr. to voice Iron Man during the series. Most of the MCU Marvel movie actors came back to do the voices of their animated characters, but obviously there's going to be like one or two people that probably didn't come back. I believe the idea with the Dark Doctor Strange is that a version of Christine Palmer in his universe winds up dying and he tries to use magic to bring her back or find a way to bring her back and it just goes completely off the rails and drives him to a much darker place. It's just kind of the way they're pitching him. You can even see a version of him fighting the Ancient One. This seems like a version of Doctor Strange from that episode using the Time Stone to turn time back so to speak. Like he's going back to the events of him in the Lambo before he has his accident. But actually talking about the multiverse, you see the events of the first Avengers film, but then it sort of shifts realities and you get that multiverse Avengers team. I'm not exactly sure what they're going to call their team, but it's basically meant to be a multiverse Avengers team because of the way they're mirroring the Avengers Assemble scene from that first movie. And it's Peggy Carter, Captain Britain. You have a version of Black Panther, but that's actually supposed to be Killmonger Black Panther. It called King Killmonger. Obviously he becomes King of Wakanda because you have a version of Black Panther who became Star-Lord. There's a version of Gamora wielding Thanos' double-bladed sword from Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame. She's also got a version of Thanos' armor as well. Then you have that party version of Thor without the sleeves. This is more of the Guardians of the Galaxy episode with T'Challa Star-Lord with him stealing a version of the Power Stone. Michael Rooker coming back as Yondu doing the voiceover talking to him about where he wants to be. It seems like a lot of that episode deals with them going to see the Collector as well. Like they have that giant fight where they're fighting a really, really ripped version of the Collector. Like you see him with his shirt off. Maybe they're just trying to redeem the character a little bit. In Marvel Comics, the Collector is one of the elders of the universe. He's very, very powerful. There's a version of the Hulk with Black Widow. It's not clear which movie this is happening during, but then it seems like the Hulk is smashing a bunch of Ultron's robots. There's also a lot of Ultron footage during this as well. When they jump to the next voiceover actor talking more about the multiverse, sort of continuing picking up that conversation in the trailer, the voice actually sounds like it's coming from Vision, but it doesn't sound like Paul Bettany, unless the way they sync the voice up with Vision's lips is meant to be misleading. It just sounds like they're trying to say that somebody else winds up becoming a version of Vision. You see Party Thor in what seems like Vegas fighting a bunch of Ultron's robots. I guess that kind of explains the Party Thor theme. I'm sure Thor would love to go to Vegas if he could. Then you have a version of Loki that seems like it's from the events of the first Thor film, but he's brought the Asgardian army, which he's in control of now, with the Warriors 3 behind him, and the Cask of Ancient Winters with Odin's spear, and it seems like he just opens up with the Cask of Ancient Winters on Nick Fury and S.H.I.E.L.D. You also see more footage of him later in the trailer marching the Asgardian army into the United Nations, so it almost seems like he's trying to conquer Earth, but it's happening during the events of the first Thor film. We get more Howard the Duck. He's also during that Guardians of the Galaxy T'Challa Star-Lord episode. And if you notice the three-piece suit that he's wearing, that's actually straight out of the comics. Then this is a version of Captain Carter hopping on the Iron Man skinny Steve Rogers in the very tank-like World War II Iron Man suit going off into battle. So eventually she winds up fighting a version of Red Skull. There's also another really cool scene of her wielding what seems like a version of Excalibur, which is used by Captain Britain in the comics. This is more footage of Killmonger. Like even in this footage over here, you see the Dormilaje with a version of Pepper Potts fighting together and you have Shuri here in the foreground. But it also seems like some of this Dora Milaje footage later in the trailer is of them fighting a version of Scarlet Witch who seems like maybe she's gone full team Ultron during the events of the original Avengers Age of Ultron movie. Like it might actually be that Killmonger is helping protect Wakanda and it's Ultron's robots attacking Wakanda with the help of Scarlet Witch trying to take their vibranium. There's a couple different scenes of Captain Carter here, her just attacking more Nazis during the events of World War II during that first Captain America movie. The reason why there's so much footage of her during this is because I believe she's going to lead that multiverse Avengers team, but also because she is the first episode of the series. Like it'll be what if Captain America for the first episode. And I don't know if they're going to drop the first two episodes that first week or if it'll just be the first episode. They usually wait to the very last minute before they explain all those really specific plans, all the stuff that you would want to know. There's a version of Arnim Zola, also from that first Captain America movie. It's hard to tell where this is happening. It could either be on Ego the Living Planet because he does show up later in the trailer, or it could be from the really dark Doctor Strange episode. 
you see the watcher amidst the New York City landscape just talking about his mission, about how he cannot interfere with human affairs. He is bound to just watch everything play out. There's a version of the Ravagers led by T'Challa Star-Lord. You have Korath in the background, Yandu next to him. I'm not sure who's on his right, but then you have Taserface on the far right. Then we get a version of Peter Parker Spider-Man from what seems like either the events of Spider-Man Homecoming or Captain America Civil War. He seems a little bit older than he was during Captain America Civil War, so I will assume that this is is from the events of Spider-Man Homecoming or at some point after the events of that film. But this answers all your questions about whether or not they can use Spider-Man during these episodes. So just charting the timeline, it just seems like it takes place before the events of Spider-Man Far From Home, before he upgrades to the Steve Ditko suit. This is a version of Black Widow on the motorcycle, probably from the events of Avengers Age of Ultron. It seems like a lot of this footage happens with them fighting a version of Ultron. This is from the Marvel Zombies episode. You see zombie Captain America, then you see a version of zombie Iron Man in his armor from what seems like Avengers Infinity War. This seems like a version of zombie Cole Obsidian behind him. So it just sounds like whatever happens during this version of Avengers Infinity War, it leads to the creation of all these zombies. Like something goes really, really wrong. This is more of Hawkeye and Thor from the events of that first Thor movie. They have to have a way of explaining the party version of Thor though, so this version of Thor could wind up becoming the party Thor. We see Ego the Living Planet, who I guess in this version of events, in whatever multiverse T'Challa Star-Lord comes from, is his father instead of being Peter Quill's father. This footage of Captain Britain with Excalibur fighting this giant tentacle monster seems like it's after she's met with Doctor Strange and it's coming from one of those big crossover episodes. It could be Shumagorth, it could be just any other random creature from the multiverse. There's a version of Drax with T'Challa Star-Lord during the events of that Guardians of the Galaxy episode. Black Widow, but here's the difference. During this episode, it seems like she's wielding Captain America's shield except it has a very different looking star on it. It actually seems much more like a Russian themed Captain America shield, like the red star of Russia on it. This is just more of Killmonger from the events of that first Iron Man film after he saved Tony Stark. Then you get all of Ultron's robots taking off en masse. Like I said, it might wind up being Killmonger and Tony Stark Iron Man saving Wakanda and that's how he winds up becoming a version of King Killmonger. T'Challa's mother leading the Dora Milaje into battle, just like you see all the other Wakanda big fight scenes. A version of Vision ripping the Mind Stone out of his own forehead. That might be during the Avengers Infinity War episode. A version of Bruce Banner hulking out. The weird thing about the head in the jar here is this is actually supposed to be Scott Lang Ant-Man. Not sure why he is a head in the jar, but because Vision's standing next to him, that might be from the events of the Avengers Infinity War episode, or it could be from the Avengers Age of Ultron episode. Then they have that funny scene of T'Challa Star-Lord trying to escape with all of Thanos or Ronan's men during the events of the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie, with Yondu saving him with his Finn arrow. And if you weren't sure what was going on here, this is Chadwick Boseman doing the voice of his character. They actually recorded all of his dialogue a long time ago before he passed away. So I'm sure when they introduce the character, there'll be a special memorial dedicated to him during that episode. Like they'll have some special card saying in memory of Chadwick Boseman. They've actually already started filming the live action Black Panther 2 movie. And there have even been more confirmations about Namor and the big battle between Wakanda and Atlantis. So we'll do more separate videos about that when we get more information about the Black Panther 2 movie. Then you see the broken mirror depicting many episodes, many alternate realities from the Marvel movies. So starting top to bottom, left to right, obviously there's like a whole bunch of footage in here. This might be from the Guardians of the Galaxy episode. Then you have Loki going to the United Nations in what seems like the same episode from the events of the first Thor movie after he's taken out Nick Fury with the cask of Ancient Winters. Then Thor trying to take his hammer back for the first time. Skinny boy Steve Rogers, T'Challa Star-Lord. Then you have the Hulk in the middle of hulking out, the Hydra logo and more of Captain Carter getting the super soldier serum becoming Captain Britain. This just seems like one of the Dora Milaje. This monastery seems like it's from the first Captain America movie. This seems like it's from the dark Doctor Strange episode, Captain America's shield in the ice leading into the events of the first Avengers film. This is Proxima Midnight from that Avengers Infinity War episode. This is more of Killmonger from that first Iron Man movie episode. Yondu from the Guardians episode, then Red Skull also from that Captain Carter, Captain Britain episode. Yondu and the Ravagers picking up young T'Challa Star-Lord as a child. Iron Man then in the donut scene from Iron Man 2. That also seems like it's connected to the Killmonger footage of them forming their partnership. Then the mirror fractures again, breaking into even more different realities depicting more scenes. So again, top to bottom, left to right, this is Howard Stark giving Peggy Carter the super soldier serum, more of the Guardians episode. Then Iron Man with an arc reactor in his chest. Not sure which episode this comes from. This is from that Doctor Strange episode when he first comes to Kamar Taj to ask the Ancient One for help. 
This old man seems like T'Challa's father, King T'Chaka. This is Black Panther, but this might be King Killmonger Black Panther. Then more Captain Britain, and then this is just Loki next to her from that Loki episode. The zombie with blonde hair and regular colored shirt. Not really sure who that's supposed to be. This is young T'Challa from the Guardians of the Galaxy episode. It's not clear who the woman with the scratch marks on her face is, but it kind of looks like Jane Foster. Then bald Obadiah Stane. Then as the Watcher asked them to dare and face the unknown and ask the question, what if? The mirror shatters again into more alternate realities, kind of swirling into the montage in the background of infinite possibilities. Then the shards form into the logo title and they reveal the release date for episode one is August 11th, which is a Wednesday, like I said. What'll probably wind up happening is they'll drop more trailer footage during the Olympics, just because so many eyeballs will be on that. So we won't have to wait that long after the Loki finale before we get the next big Marvel Disney Plus series. So this will be the next big thing that I'll be doing videos for. They also end this with a new version of the Disney Plus logo, but it's Yondu's arrow completing the logo. The other brand new stuff that we see during the poster here too, like we see Gamora wearing Thanos' armor. I already talked about Spider-Man wearing Doctor Strange's Cloak of Levitation. This is Black Widow in the upper right. This is a version of Ultron with all six Infinity Stones in his chest, like he himself has become a living Infinity Gauntlet. But everyone, let me know in the comments if you spotted any big Easter eggs during this footage, any big multiverse Easter eggs that I didn't talk about during the video. There's going to be a bunch of stuff happening during this. It'll be way crazier than the Loki episodes, like I said. I just love the idea Marvel was like, oh, you like alligator Loki and you thought that was crazy. We'll hold our beer. We'll do you one better. But what'll happen is, is I have some Loki bonus videos that I'm working on. Also, the Black Widow movie is being released tomorrow as I'm posting this video. So I will do a Black Widow post credit scene video and some Easter egg videos for that as well. While you wait for everything, everyone click here for my full Loki episode 5 video and click here for all my other Loki episode videos. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys tonight.